Welcome to Ra Online. I am Dr. Sudakshina, Professor of Anatomy. Today we are going to discuss some question answers on general anatomy. So coming to the first question today. So let's see the area of uh, long bone where growth occurs is you have the four options that is symphysis if we go from the low top, bottom to up then metaphysis, diaphysis and the epiphyseal plate. Now I have bolded the answer for few questions and few questions I won't be bold, uh, bold the answer and I will be removing the bold also so you can use it for the self-study purpose later. So now coming to the growth of the long bone. Now if we see this is how the growth of the long bone is happening. So growing bone, what are the parts of the long bone? So we have the ends of the long bone which are called the epiphysis. So you have the epiphysis at the end of the long bone and then the shaft of the long bone is called the diaphysis and there is a junction between the epiphysis and the diaphysis and that area is called the metaphysis. Now in the area between the epiphysis and metaphysis there will be an epiphysial line or an epiphysial cartilage in case of long bones which are growing. So that is the area where the growth normally happens and extra bones will be added to the already existing metaphysis. So after a certain age is attained, this epiphyseal cartilage will ossify also and the long bones also will stop growing. Now if we see the long bones, definitely the long bones have an outer layer of compact bone and inner we have the medullary cavity inside which will contain the bone marrow. And the ends of the long bone are also called the spongy bone because the structure of spongy bone is different from the compact bones. And these spongy bones are separated from the compact bone by the epiphyseal line. So the epiphyseal line which is at the remnant of the epiphyseal cartilage, so that can be seen. So this is the epiphyseal line, normally it has fused and the cartilage has ossified and once the growth has stopped that will remain as the epiphyseal line. So how the bones are growing? The bones are mainly growing by a mechanism called endochondrial ossification. Now endochondrial ossification as the term means, ossification means anything where the bone starts growing, right? So that is the uh, process is called the ossification. The formation of bone is ossification. Endochondral means the chondral wherever it comes it is associated with the cartilage. So the process by which the long bones are growing is by the endochondral ossification. That means first the cartilage layout is laid and then the cartilage gets ossified to form the endochondral ossification. So endochondral ossification is always the formation of long bones and it will require one hyaline cartilage precursor. So a model of hyaline cartilage is first made and there will be centers of ossifications where it will start ossifying and we can classify the centers as primary centers and secondary centers and I will come to it what is a primary center and what is a secondary center and in the long bones the bone tissue will first appear in the diaphysis or the shaft of the bones. Now let's see how the long bones are formed in the fetal life if you see that this this is the way how the long bones are formed. So the ossification process of the long bone is mainly by a first laying out of a cartilaginous model. So once the cartilaginous model is laid out, the ossification will start happening within this model and this uh, ossification will start from some centers and these centers which appear before birth, okay, those centers are called the primary ossification centers. Now let's go through this uh, diagram over here. You can see that, that this is the cartilage model to begin with for a long bone and this model is completely cartilaginous to start with and then as the bone is proceeding, so the mesenchymal cells, first the mesenchymal cells which are derived from the mesoderm, they have condensed and formed a cartilaginous model and the cartilage, the main basic cell of the cartilage are the chondrocytes and once this is formed, so as it progresses, you can see over here the model of the future bone is formed and it has a perichondrium also which is covering this cartilaginous model. 
and there is some amount of uh, degeneration of the cartilaginous matrix is starting to happen or deteriorating of the cartilaginous matrix because that is where the centers will start appearing and then the blood supply also starts in the center. So, always it starts from the diaphysis I told you and not from the ends. So, this part of the diaphysis there is lot of blood supply which starts coming and they are piercing the perichondrium and they are entering and now you can see there is a formation of some cluster of cells which are bone cells and there is some formation of soft bone that is also called the spongy bone and this is where the primary ossification center is formed and this primary centers have started producing the bone cells and the tissue and as the tissue bone tissue is started being laid out it has started it has now increased so you can see in this diagram a medullary cavity is also formed over here the blood supply is also more and now more and more bone formation is happening and slowly the perichondrium is getting replaced by the periosteum so perichondrium is also getting replaced and you can see but still the ends are actually cartilaginous. So, the ends of the bone are cartilaginous whereas the shaft of the bone is being laid with that is the bone tissue. Now, this is the situation where normally the birth will happen. So, the ends will be more or less cartilaginous and there will be bony tissue only in the center with a medullary cavity and blood supply and after birth there are some centers which are appearing in the ends of the bone and these are called the secondary centers and these secondary centers are now helping for the bone to develop further.